happy Easter kids. So our Bible verse for today's Easter lesson is Romans 3, 24. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 24. Kids, God's gift to us, his only son dying on the cross is what allows us to be in a relationship with him again. We are no longer separated from God because of our sin. Jesus paid the price on the cross and now we are free. This is a wonderful gift that we did not deserve, but God gave us because he is loving and merciful. All right, kids, spring is in the air. One of the neatest things about spring is that it's a time for rebirth. Animals have new babies, the grass turns green again, flowers begin to grow. I've seen some, some tulips kind of starting to pop up and the trees get buds that turn to leaves. God made a beautiful world, didn't he? When Jesus came to this earth, he was a baby too. He lived a life much like our lives. Well, he didn't have like a Nintendo Switch or anything, but he lived it without sin. When it came time, he sacrificed himself for us on a cross to take away our sins. Jesus gave us an opportunity to be born again a rebirth. Even though we've already been physically born, we can be spiritually born again. This means that the old can pass away and we can have a new life in Jesus. We no longer have to keep on sinning. We can ask God to help us to let go of our sins and live like Jesus. We will still make mistakes, but we are forgiven and washed clean by Jesus' sacrifice. Take some time this spring to enjoy God's creation. Play out in the sunshine. Jump in the rain puddles. Okay, well, make sure you have rain gear on before you do that. Enjoy a picnic on the green grass. Watch and listen for baby birds in the tree nests and new rabbits hopping around your yard. All of these new creations can be a reminder to us that Jesus has given us a fresh start too. We have always been his creation that he loves. Once we accept Jesus into our hearts, we are a new creation, forgiven and able to live our lives to the fullest by living like Jesus did. Hey kids. So I have a question for you. What's your favorite Easter or spring activity? Do you like going on an Easter egg hunt? Uh, I like going on an Easter egg hunt, hunting for chocolate eggs. But you know that Easter isn't just about Easter eggs and chocolate, right? Well, happy Easter, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful Easter weekend. And many of us look forward to lots of fun with family and, and friends during Easter. And um, we all have different traditions and celebrations. It, is one of your favorite traditions dyeing Easter eggs or doing an Easter craft? Many people enjoy this fun activity before Easter. Some families put the eggs at a table at a sitting for Easter dinner. There are a lot of fun traditions with colored eggs. Also, Easter eggs are a special treat this time of the year. The eggs themselves don't taste any different, but the dye shells make them more fun to look at. Now, what if you decided to save an Easter egg on a shelf and never eat it? You might enjoy looking at it for a day or two, but pretty soon something unpleasant would happen. Can you tell me what would happen to the egg if it just sat there? Any guesses? That beautiful egg would start to stink. Easter eggs that don't get eaten turn rotten. This is a great reminder for us that Jesus has given us a beautiful gift of salvation. We're meant to accept that gift. Not just talk about how nice it is and never use it. We shouldn't reject Jesus's exceptional gift to us. Now, should we? He has given us the gift of salvation. We can be reborn in him and forgiven for our sins. Today, we are going to read about a couple of different people who were given this gift. 
One accepted the gift and was saved. Unfortunately, the same story can't be said for another. Let's read the stories in the Bible and find out what happened. All right, let's read through Matthew 26, 14 to 16, where Judas agrees to betray Jesus. That's a big word, betray. All right. Then one of the 12, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I turn Jesus over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that time on, he was looking for an opportunity to turn him in. Kids, do any one of you know this story about Judas Iscariot? Do you remember how Judas betrayed Jesus? Do you remember what he did? Have you ever seen any videos about it or read any stories about it? Okay, it was with a kiss. He kissed Jesus and that's how the soldiers knew who Jesus was. Now, let's read Luke 23. 39 to 43, but the thief on the cross. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God? We are rightly punished. We are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. So what happened here in these stories? Judas betrayed Jesus and, in, and instead of following him, he gave him up for money. Judas didn't really love and follow Jesus. He had the gift from Jesus, but instead of accepting him, he let his heart become rotten with greed. This is a sad story, isn't it? Judas missed out on the most important thing anyone could ever receive, salvation. And I would like to remind you that Jesus, Judas was one of the people that had been following Jesus, so he should have known Jesus better. The thief on the cross next to Jesus, on the other hand, admitted that he was a sinner and he asked Jesus if he could be saved. The thief seems to have made some rotten choices before he met Jesus, but well, I mean, he was hanging on a cross next to Jesus. So obviously he made some bad decisions. But once he met Jesus, he made the best decision of his life by asking Jesus to save him. Jesus promised the thief that he would be in heaven with him. This means Jesus forgives us, even for our rotten past. We just have to choose to follow him. Okay, let's read what happens after Jesus died on the cross. Okay, let's read Matthew 28, 1 to 10 about the resurrection. At dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. Just before they arrived, there was a great earthquake and an angel from the Lord came down from heaven. Coming to the stone, he rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook with fear. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus. He isn't here. He's raised from the dead, just as he said. Come see the place where they laid him. Now hurry, go and tell his disciples. He's been raised from the dead. He's going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. I've given the message to you. With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and grabbed his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I am going into Galilee. They will see me there. It's amazing. Jesus rose from the dead. He defeated death and his followers rejoiced and were glad. We have the opportunity to be Jesus' followers too just like the disciples. If we admit that we are sinners, ask Jesus to forgive us and save us. He will welcome us into his family with open arms. We all have the same choice that Judas and the thief had. We all have the chance to be forgiven. 
and be born again into a new life of following Jesus. This is why we celebrate Easter. This is why we gather together in church and sing to God and thank Him. We have been given the opportunity to be saved. No matter how rotten we've been in the past, Jesus offers us salvation. A lot of us have some stinky things that we've done in the past. You may have heard someone lie, cheated, or stolen something. We have all made mistakes. But when we accept Jesus into our hearts, God no longer sees our sins. He sees us in a new light. We are his children and he loves us so much. But we have to be careful like Judas. We are meant to accept and use Jesus' gifts, not let it sit and roll on the shelf or rot on the shelf. Jesus dying for us was the ultimate sacrifice that he did because he loves us. We shouldn't waste that. Just like the delicious hard-boiled Easter eggs, don't reject the exceptional gift from Jesus. Instead, accept a gift and thank God for it. When you bite into an Easter egg, a chocolate egg, or even the next time you have scrambled eggs for breakfast, stop and thank God for sending his son to die on the cross in your place. He loves you that much. He cares for you deeply. Let's all pray to him now and thank him for this wonderful gift. Okay, kids. Dear Jesus, thank you for your gift of a new life. Help us to accept this gift and let it change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids. For uh, today's discussion questions, how about we do true or false instead? All right. First question. Easter is the celebration of Jesus defeating death and saving us from our sins. Is that true or false? Yell it out. Come on. It's true. The thief, case number two, the thief was perfect, which is why he was promised that he would be in heaven with Jesus. The thief was perfect. Is that true or false? That is false. Number three, Judas chose to betray Jesus instead of accepting his gift. Is that true or false? That is true. Number four, Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day. Is it true or false? It's true. If we accept Jesus into our hearts, we can be his followers just like the disciples were. Is that true or false? That is true. Okay, final question. No matter how rotten I've been, Jesus offers me salvation. Is that true or false? Okay, good thing that one is true. Okay, I hope you guys have a great Easter weekend and get to celebrate some time with family, friends, and uh, just enjoy this break celebrating Jesus' gift to us.